Saxon Algebra 2, Lesson 90. Here's a fun lesson. We're going to start solving systems that have three equations and three letters in them. They're kind of cool, and I think they're guaranteed to make you feel smart. So let's proceed. Writing them out is kind of an ordeal. What we want to do is we want to put a fair amount of space in between, that's a plus, the various parts of the equation. See how I've exaggerated that? Um, that's going to help us in a minute. You don't have to exaggerate it quite as much as I do, but do think about that. Because it will help us attack the problem. I had a, a teacher somewhere along the line that always used to like to say that. Let's attack the problem. Kind of fun. Okay, there is our system of equations. What we're looking to do is we're looking to find a value for x and y and z that will make all three of these equations true. Okay, that's our goal. And in order to do that, we are looking, especially at first, to use elimination, okay? And what catches our attention are these Zs. What I do is I look down the columns of matching letters. That's why it's important to set them up very neatly so that I can kind of look at them without a lot of visual clutter. And I'm looking for ways that I could combine two out of the three of the equations at a time and have the coefficients cancel out, right? So here, you know, I could, I could, I'd have to multiply this one by two. I'd have to create some minuses in here. Same here. These two cancel nicely, but this one doesn't. But here I say, look, nobody's got a number in front of them and it goes minus plus or plus minus plus. That gives me some really strong possibilities. So I like that this has, I'm going to write down what I like about this. It has matching coefficients with alternating positive negative signs. That's what I like about this. That's what draws me to choose those, okay? This is really the hardest part of the problem is figuring out an overall strategy. And I'm gonna write this down as I go, but what I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna eliminate the, the first two, let's call them A and B. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add A and B together. These will cancel and I'll get a X and Y answer. Then, and again, I didn't know you could do this before. When I was first learning this, I was like, what? Then yeah, I'm gonna take B and C and add them together, and that will cancel the Z's again and give me another X and Y statement. And then I'll figure out what to do at that point based on what I've got, all right? So my step one, I'm going to eliminate A and B together, okay? So I'm not gonna rewrite them, I'm just gonna look up here and I can do it without rewriting it, right? So if I add together A and B, then I will have 3X plus Y, there will be no Z, and my final answer will be four, right? The Z's cancel out. Now for my second step, I'm gonna eliminate B and C again. Who knew? So now I'm ignoring, let me get a piece of paper and cover this up with so I don't get confused. Now I'm eliminating these two. It'll be 4X minus 3Y 
The z's are gone. This equals a 1. Huh. All right. Now I've got a new system that looks a lot like the systems we used to have, right? So what I'm going to do, just to be super clear, is I'm going to copy this to the top of the next page. And then we'll solve this as an ordinary system of equations, right? So that's how I got to this, though, was I started by looking down the columns and seeing which ones we're going to eliminate the most easily. I chose Z because it had matching coefficients, alternating signs. Those are the characteristics I would have had to create if I didn't find them. And then I used that to say, okay, let's combine these two, and then we'll combine these two. This is what I've got. Copying it on the next page. Now we're to the easy part. This notebook never wants to let go of the pages. They always stick. True life problems. Okay, so this is what we had. You don't have to recopy it, I do. Equals four, and then All right, so this is our new system. This is what we got when we added A and B. This was B and C. Now I'm ready to eliminate these. And let's see, I look down the columns again. Mm, that would require a lot of multiplication and a minus sign. This, if I just multiply this one by three, I will get what I want. So let's do that. It'll be 9x plus 3y equals 12. I lightly squiggle that out. I don't need it anymore. And now I'll add these two and I get 13x, that cancels, equals 13. Oh boy. I get x equals 1. Now, just like our other system of equation problems, I have to go back in and solve for the other letters. I can use any of the equations I want, but I know that it's gonna be really helpful if I use the simpler equations whenever I can. This one looks pretty simple. Three times one plus y equals four. Well, that's three. So if I subtract 3, I get y equals 1. There's my second answer. And then I have to go way back to the beginning to pick up an equation with z still in it. I'll take this first one. That'll be x plus 2y plus z equals 4. I'll copy that back here. x plus 2y plus z equals 4. x is 1. So 1 plus 2 times y is also 1. Plus z equals 4. This is 2. So if I subtract 3, I get the 1 and the 2. And wouldn't you know it, z equals 1 also. So I write the answer as an ordered triple, right? Not an ordered pair, but an ordered triple. One, one, one. That's our high final answer. And just like with our regular system of equations, we could solve this by graphing, but we would need a three-dimensional graph. What? We're not going to graph them, but if you can imagine I'm trying to think of how to describe it. This isn't too satisfying, but if there's the point one one, right? So it's like there's a line coming like this 
and a line coming, say, like that. There's another line that's following like my pencil that's going through that very same point. It's not a pencil, it's a pen, right? So it's three-dimensional. You have to imagine a third line that's coming through the plane of my paper from another dimension. Whew, that's kind of cool, right? So we're not going to graph them, but I just want you to know that they are graphable if you have a three-dimensional graph. Okay, let's do another one. And there are just the two so far. We're going to expand on this in future lessons. 90.2, solve. <clears throat> Again, I like to really exaggerate the columns because the trick to doing these problems is to seeing a nice pattern. And again, we call them A, B, and C, just so we can talk about them. <clears throat> it is not anything more than that. Okay, so we're looking down the columns. All right, we want matching coefficients and opposite signs. These are all positive. We could multiply those by two. Okay, that's an option. This, we've got two coefficients matching. And we've got a nice plus minus pattern going. This looks pretty good to me, but let's look at the Z's. Z's, again, are all positive. We'd have to multiply these guys by three. It's not the end of the world, but these two columns are more or less the same. This is the one I like better, even though we'll have to adjust one of the coefficients. That's better than we'd have to adjust two over here. And this has the plus minus pattern that I like. So what I'm gonna do we're gonna have to adjust here, right? Last time we didn't have to adjust in the beginning. I'm going to multiply this whole equation by two, and that will give us the coefficient we want there. I'm gonna write that answer down here. It'll be four X minus two Y plus six Z equals 18. That is our new equation, and I'm going to gently squiggle this out, and I'm going to call this A, but it's really our new A, right? Now, how do I want to combine these? All right, B is the one that I'm going to want to combine with both, so I'm going to want to do A and B, and then I'm going to want to do B and C, right? That will give me cancel and cancel. All right, so let's start by combining A and B. So I'm gonna put this pen here so I don't accidentally look at that. It will be 5X, the Y's cancel, plus 7Z equals 26. Right? And then, so that's A and B. Then I wanna do B and C, so let's move my pencil down here. It's a pen having some sort of mental gap there. We add those, we get 2x. Again, this cancels, happy days, plus 2z equals, and we add this, we get eight. Okay, now we've gone from three variables and three statements down to two variables and two. And let me just, I just wanna cover that up so we don't get confused about what we're looking at. <clears throat> now we have, we still have a system of equations, but we have two equations and two variables. It's what we're used to. This looks like an old friend, although kind of a cranky old friend because we don't have any easy ways to eliminate these guys against each other. So I'm going to eliminate the X's. I'll multiply the top by two and the bottom by minus five. I like to put the minus in the bottom row whenever possible, and I would rather multiply. I could have done these just as easily, but I'd rather multiply by five than seven, right? Multiplying by two isn't bad, but I choose this column because I like these two numbers better than those two numbers. 
All right, now I'm ready to multiply across. So my new A and B is 10X, and I'm gonna bring it closer together. I don't need this big empty space anymore. <clears throat> Plus 14Z equals 52. And then my new B and C is, I'm multiplying by minus five, minus 10X, minus 10z equals minus 40. Be careful with those wretched minus signs. They're so tricky. All right, now I'm ready to add these. This cancels. 4z equals 12. Aw, so cute. Z, I'm gonna write it down lower in the list. Z equals three, and then I know I'm gonna need a Y and an X. So let's go back. Let's see how much of this we can do in our heads. Two X plus two Z equals eight. I'm gonna use that one. This, I plug in here, that makes six. Six from eight is two. X must equal one. Do you see how I did that in my head? It's perfectly fine to write it out and plug it in, but you are advanced enough now and have a strong command of how to carry solving an equation in your head that I encourage you to do that, right? So this is what I did. I knew Z was three, I plugged it in, I mentally multiplied and got six, I swam the six across and subtracted it two. Now I have two X equals two, easy, X equals one. Now we have to find an equation with a y in it. Let's go back up here. I like this one. One minus something plus three. That's a little too much to carry in my head, so I'm gonna solve it right here. X is one minus two y plus z is three equals zero. I'm gonna subtract those two in a single four. That cancels out all of this. I get minus two y equals minus four. And there I can see that y equals two. Look what John did for us. He made us another super cute pattern. And you can put all of this as your answer if you want. Again, if you gave me this as the answer to a review problem, or a test problem, I would ask you to rewrite the answer in another form, meaning I want this, the ordered triple. And again, remember this is graphable if we have a three-dimensional graph. Um, you know those three-dimensional chess boards where it looks like a chess board, but there's three of them and they're stacked on top? I always wanted to play, maybe not three-dimensional chess, but three-dimensional checkers would be fun, or even three-dimensional tic-tac-toe. I think on in Star Trek, they have a lot of those. Uh, okay, that is lesson 90, a system of three equations. Remember, stack your variables neatly, or your terms neatly as you write out the problem, and look for the most desirable column to eliminate. Matching coefficients, alternating signs. If you don't automatically get it, you can make it happen as we did here. But make that as easy on yourself as possible. We are, like I said, we are going to take this problem to another level to level, level or two. I can solve algebra all day, but sometimes I just can't talk. Um, different parts of the brain. I, we will be coming back to this. So, have fun with it. Thank you. Goodbye.